Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of the UMass Online Dynasty. Today we are going on the road to play against the University of Buffalo, home of the Bulls, and it's going to be a tough game for us, I'm not going to lie. They're 4-2 overall in the season and they are a lot better than us on paper. For starters, they actually score with the 39th best scoring offense in the country. We're currently ranked at 125, so it's going to be tough, but we'll see what we got. Alright, so here we are at the University of Buffalo's football stadium, and looks like we're going to have some classic football weather to work with here today. Taking a look at the MAC East standings, we are actually only a game out from the top of the Eastern Division of the MAC Conference, so if we can somehow win this game, we can get into a tie and maybe force a situation to where maybe we can get into this conference championship game down the road. But first, before we worry about any of that, we have to worry about what's in front of us right now, and it is this Buffalo football team. So we're going to get started with a carry for Jeff Reed. He's going to kick us off with a five-yard run up the left-hand side. Sets us up to a decent second and five, which will then uh, Walter McCall is going to throw a nice pass to Derek Carrington. He's able to gain 28 yards, and just like that, we are in Buffalo territory. However, we're going to be sacked to be sent right back because we just did not have enough time on the screen. Couple of plays later, though, we are now facing a second and 21. We're going to do a quick curl route to Marcus McCoy in order to get us into a more manageable situation with the third and 13. And then Walter McCoy is going to drop back once again and is going to get to his main man, David Guerrero. That person is in a skirt right now. That has to be absolutely insane with snow coming on the ground. Surprise or not, too much more layered up. But, you know, what do I know? I'm not a college football game developer. <laughs> but going into his next play, we're going to throw it down the middle, and it's nearly picked off. And unfortunately for us, we are just outside of field goal range, so we're going to have to punt it away. But thankfully, it's a pretty nice punt. It's going to be inside the 20-yard line, to say the least. And now we have to worry about the Buffalo offense. All right, so now Buffalo has a chance at the football. So Chad Forte is going to scramble. He has more than just the arm. He can get it done with the legs as well, gaining 26 yards on the play. I nearly burped there. I'm surprised that wasn't too loud for y'all to hear, to be honest. But Buffalo is showing why they are the better team on paper. And in just two plays, they've gone from inside the 20-yard line, basically inside UMass territory. They are just moving the ball with reckless abandon. However, we're able to get the stop on fourth down, and Buffalo is going to punt it back to us. All right, so no score yet, but we are striving to be the first score on paper, although it's not going to happen. Buffalo is going to pick it off as David Singletary is able to cut in front of the slant guy. And Buffalo is going to start with really nice territory to start this possession. Ensuing play, running the star running back who looks like Jeff Williams with a G instead of a J is going to run it forward up the gut for a first down. And is just going to continue a powerful running, breaks a couple of tackles. And just like that, Buffalo is going to take a 7 to nothing lead. Just about 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Alright, so UMass is going to try to recover from the devastating interception that led to that Buffalo touchdown. And it's going to start with Waltzman called trying to get it done with the legs. However, that was the last play of the first quarter. And Buffalo is only up 7 to nothing. So even with the costly mistake, we are still very much in this ballgame. We just have to be a little bit smarter here because if we play a little smarter, move the chains consistently, we can actually win this game as this tough football weather is always a great equalizer and that definitely benefits a massive underdog like we are. Walton McCall is going to take the carry though for a gain of 7 yards which is a first down for the UMass Minutemen. Sets up a drive play for the running back Jeff Thompson, or not Jeff Thompson, Jeff Reed. I don't know why I wanted to say Thompson because it looks like Thompson was open for a split second, but it looks like going to go to the tight end, and it's just a little bit off the mark, 
gonna have to settle for a third and inches play where Walter McCall is gonna scramble and Marcus McCoy is able to make the catch despite the heavy traffic first down for your UMass Minutemen it still drives me a little crazy that some of these cheerleaders for our UMass football team are out here without any further leg covering beside the skirt I mean it is snow falling on the ground granted I know the winters are usually brutal so maybe they're just used to it Speaking of stuff that we're used to, there's Jeff Reed making another impact play for a gain of 15. First and goal for the Minutemen, and it's going to set up this Reed option, which Walter McCall is going to keep, and he's going to be able to get into the end zone, and it's going to be a touchdown for the Minutemen. Game is going to be all tied up at 7. So there's only a couple minutes left in the first half, and we are still in this game. It's going to be interesting to see if we can get a stop on this drive right here. Maybe set it up to where we can get the ball and maybe take the lead to end this first half. However, that requires us to get two scops in a row as Jeff Williams continues to run it down our throats. This time, only a 15-yard gain. Ensuing play, though, it looks like the wide receiver and Jerry Gooden is able to run up the middle across the field, gain 18 yards. And we're just continuing to be cut up through the middle of the field. Going to have to make some adjustments definitely whenever Buffalo gets out of this no huddle. As they are starting to significantly speed it up with the end of the first half deeply approaching. However, Jeff Williams is kept out in the end zone this time. Last time he was able to break multiple tackles for a longer touchdown run. In the meantime, Jeff Williams is going to throw it to, or not throw it, but he's going to try to catch it, but it's dropped. So it sets up a third and three for Chad Forte. He has plenty of time in the pocket, and Jeff Williams is nearly able to truck his way into the end zone, but it's going to be a first and goal inside the five-yard line for the Buffalo Bulls. And then right here, Jeff Forte is able to truck our defensive lineman and break another tackle. And it was I was a little disappointed by our defense, but that is an impressive touchdown run at the same time. Which means the Buffalo Bulls are going to be up 14-7. UMass, however, does have an opportunity to get one more score before half as UMass is starting to drive themselves. They are at the, looks like about the 40-yard line. And then David Guerrero is going to catch another 14-yard pass off the out route for another first down. UMass is starting to move into their no huddle offense on its own need to get some points on the board before the end of this first half second and five for umass walton mccall is going to drop back the pass for some reason he's going to scramble it although he's able to get the first down which will temporarily stop the clock so here we are on buffalo side of the field we uh, had decent field position on a couple of previous drives but just haven't quite been able to put it all together are we going to be able to tie this ball game? It's going to be interesting to see with just a minute left. Next time, Marcus McCoy is going to get the catch up the middle in traffic, but is still able to hang on, which means now UMass is in the red zone and just need to get a few more yards in order to finish it up as Jeff Reed gets the carry for nine yards. Second and one for UMass, Waltz McCall is going to once again hand it off to Jeff Reed, and this time he's able to finish it off as Jeff Reed is able to get into the end zone up the gut and it is now a tied ball game here in the city of Buffalo. Like I said man, this football weather that we got going right now, it's fumbled! Oh my goodness, Chad Forte puts the ball on the ground and with 18 seconds left we have a chance to take the lead. However, with our luck, it looks like we weren't able to do anything with it. So we're going into halftime all tied up at 14. Definitely are still in it because as I was saying, this weather is really providing us a really equalizing opportunity. Really favors an underdog team like ourselves. And you showed it right, showed in that previous drive where Chad Forte just maybe wasn't able to get too much of a grip on the ball as you typically would on a clearer day. And it led to that fumble, granted. Of course, nothing happened for us there. Chad Forte, speaking of which, is going to hang up in the pocket this time around. He's going to avoid scrambling for now, but is able to find Marcus Lewis for a gain of 10 to 15 yards. First and 10 for Buffalo. It's going to be an option, and Chad Forte does have a little bit of space, and it's... 
quite the animation, and he is flipped over, but is still able to gain a few yards for the Buffalo faithful. Very next play, Chad Forte is going to keep it this time around on the read option, and this time he's able to gain nine yards, but is down on the field. Unfortunately, it looks like he uh, hurt his ribs on the play, and it looks like backup quarterback Corey Washington is going to be in the game. However, Corey Washington does have some athleticism that we need to keep our tabs on because he was able to gain 12 yards just off just off that first run and then Jeff Williams was able to finish off despite the backup quarterback in the game doesn't mean any more attention could be given to Jeff Williams because Corey Washington was able to keep him honest next play though looks like qu cornerbacks the gender less is able to find the ball intercept it and Robbie Wes is gonna get his get the third interception for Walter McCall and it's going to be a 28 to 14 game what makes matters worse though is that UMass has was forced to go free and out so now Buffalo has the chance to open this game wide open it took a half but it looks like it, we're just at a point where the talent of the death charts are starting to show as it was really close in that first half I'll tell you what but here in this third quarter, Buffalo is really starting to pull away as there's another long run for the tight end. Thankfully, our safeties were able to get to him, and but he'll be stopped inside the 10, setting up first and goal. Speaking of first and goal, though, Corey Washington can do more than just run. He can get to Jerry Gooden for another touchdown, and already... It seems like a pretty short quarter, but just like that, Buffalo puts a 21 spot on UMass, and it is now a free touchdown game. But once again, UMass had to go free and out, so now the Buff, so now UMass defense needs to step up here in order to keep this game somewhat respectable. Can't worry about getting all of those points back at one time. Just need to claw away and hope for a miracle from here on out. Speaking of miracles, it looks like we're not going to be getting one anytime soon with Mike Cole getting a reception up the middle for 12 yards, setting up a long... Hold up now. Don't don't uh, call it a comeback yet as the star corner in Devin Harris is able to pick the ball off. And UMass might be right back into this game depending on what they do with this offensive possession. Wow, what a critical interception to keep UMass's hopes and dreams alive. However, 4th and 14 as we are forced to go free and out. And Walter McCall just sadly overthrows it by a good 5 to 10 yards. Just isn't his day. He's just having a really hard time throwing the football. Second and five for Buffalo, and it's going to be a run up the left-hand side for Jeff Williams. Able to gain the first down and a little bit more after that. He's able to finish the run runoff pretty strongly. Jeff Williams, man, you know, he is definitely a stud. Really fits with the personality of not only the Buffalo Bulls, but the city of Buffalo in, in general. Definitely known more for its running. And you see it right there at the end. Is able to get it to the goal line. Going to put up a few more points on the board just to make the score look a little bit better for Buffalo as Corey Washington's going to finish it off and take a 42-14 to lead. However, good news for us though on our very last drive when things are already decided, we are able to get a junk garbage time touchdown. So we will have a little bit of momentum moving forward. But Buffalo is going to end up winning this game 42-21. to Definitely played better than what we did last week. Some good things that I saw, particularly in the first half. Just need to work on playing a complete game of football. So we can end up, translate some of those first half performance into complete games and therefore turn them into wins. Looking at the stats though for Walter McCall. And Walter had a tough day today. He had three interceptions. He had less than 50% completion percentage. He did have that one garbage time touchdown, but it, this performance is on him. It, it's the main reason why we ended up losing this game. And then, of course, our running uh, game didn't really uh, complement us. Granted, we kind of had to abandon that today. However, our receivers 
did a little bit better. Uh, Marcus McCoy was a notable exception, though. He may have had led the team with catches, but he had those free drops as well. The only touchdown came from uh, Adrian Thomas, the tight end, uh, had the only touchdown catch of the day. And then our defense was led by Larry Titans, who is a senior redshirt from Fall River, Massachusetts. He led the team in tackles with all of them being solos. Granted, our uh, tackles for... He didn't have do anything else as our tackles for loss of was from an assortment of people. But, I mean, other than that, we really just had a tough day today as John Banks had the only sack of the game, so good for him for at least getting to the quarterback. And then Cliff Harris. I know I said Devin earlier in the in this broadcast, but it's actually Cliff Harris that actually gets the interception. And then John Banks also forces the fumble, which Larry Tuttons actually recovers. So he did more than just have those six tackles, which is really nice to be able to see that as well. All right, so next week we're going to play Western Michigan as we are fighting for our bowl chances. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Make sure you leave a like. Leave a comment uh, about how the UMass football team is doing. And hit that subscribe button in the right corner. Until then, take care.